Come this way a little bit. Okay. Um, weather, not weather, but we're two schools of thought on the weather. I'm, I'm again it. <laughs> I'm again the weather. Um, weather. We should get rid of it. schools teaching forms in a set order. You have to learn this one, then this one, then this one, then this oh, one, right, then right. this one versus or kind of... for the month or for the semester, or whatever. Everyone's learning this form. Rotating curriculum. Yeah, sort yeah. Of stuff. And so that's the two schools of thought. Okay. Um, forms in a set order. It's probably how I'm going to label it. Two schools of thought, forms in a set order, question mark. I think this should be the intro. Okay. Welcome, everybody. <laughs> That's what, what we in the biz call a rolling intro. Yes. Because Very wrong. There, was no, there was no hard, hard line. I'll explain that more in a moment. Welcome to another episode of Martial Arts Radio with Andrew and Jeremy. Join us this time as our heroes embark on a journey <laughs> to figure out forms and, and different ways how, how they should, would, yeah, this metaphor, this, this whole thing's falling apart, falling apart, falling apart fast. <laughs> <laughs> if you're new, welcome. Thank you for joining us. If you're returning, also welcome and thank you for joining us. We appreciate you. We appreciate your continued support. If you are not part of the Patreon, strongly encourage you to join the Patreon. Because if you pay attention to this show, you probably find us both educational and insightful. I, I would say that. And funny. I mean, if you're, well, I meant to say entertaining and I said educational. I really did mean to say entertaining. Oh, yeah. We are entertaining. We are hilarious. <laughs> you probably find some of those things to be true. Well, there's more of that <clears throat> stuff that is also true within Patreon. So. Go ahead, check it out, patreon.com, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash whistlekick. That's where you go. You want to find out what episodes are upcoming? That's the only place where you're going to find out. If you want bonus content, audio, video, stuff like that, that's where you're going to find out. Book drafts, that's where you're going to find those. Sometimes final products. We, we do all kinds of great stuff. To those of you in there, we're not going to name you like some shows do, but we really do appreciate your support. It goes a long way to help offset the expenses of this show. How much, bear with me, how yeah. much is a cup of coffee these days? $147. No? I don't know. I don't drink coffee. This okay. is a legit question. How much? Um, this morning, when I, I met a couple of friends, shout out to Joe Lenahan and Nish Grout, who have both been on the show. We had coffee this morning. Uh, we were at Dunkin', and I got a medium latte, and it was just shy of five bucks. Okay. So for less than a cup of coffee... You can help support the show, yeah. And, and I two dollars, and I think that's important to, to to know. Like, or you know, buy Jeremy and I a, a cup of coffee. Yeah, once a month, ten bucks, ten bucks a month. We bring you eight episodes a month. Yep. How much value do you find in those episodes? If you had to pay twenty five cents a piece for those episodes, would you? Well, there's two bucks. And it might sound trivial, like two dollars, whatever. But it adds I'm up. not going to bother. Like if, it, it makes a difference. This show costs money. It, if it does everybody who watched and listened to this show contributed two dollars, we would not have to worry about expenses for the show. Yep, absolutely. Just just flat out, the show doesn't cost a ton of money. It's not like you know we're mortgaging houses or mm. begging on the street corner, but it it does cost money. Yeah. So if you could so. you could spare ten bucks a month, that would be great. But if it's only two dollars a month, that's fine too. Just get it gets deducted automatically. You don't even think about it. And there are options that go up from yeah. there. The more you're willing to contribute, the more value we're going to return yeah. to you because that's what we do at Whistle Kick. But moving on, sorry. To... No, don't don't <laughs> don't apologize. I don't yeah. want us to apologize. Well, for that. I only I only apologize because I didn't want it to sound like too much of a commercial. Like that's all. We don't do a lot of commercials. No, you're stuff. right. You're right. We don't we don't do a lot and and. and you know, I think it's important that people understand the realities of what we do. Mm -hmm. You know, I think I think um, people have become so we're most of us, most of the people that listen to the show or watch the show. We grew up in the paradigm of broadcast TV mm -hmm. where advertising was really expensive. Yeah. So you could have really high production value in exchange for, you know, across an hour. 16 minutes, mm -hmm. right? 
easy. 44, uh, an hour long show is 44 minutes generally, right? That's a pretty good exchange. Yeah. We don't have that. And ads don't make anywhere, they don't cost as much <laughs> as they used to, meaning content producers don't make as much. Yeah. And so we work really hard to be really efficient. Mm -hmm. and, and the expenses with this show are more than you would just think in terms of the editing and the video and the hosting and all of that stuff. Uh, today is Friday. Mm -hmm. I could be working today. I could be doing things and teaching lessons and making money and I'm not same. choosing not to. Same. And same for Jeremy. Yeah. So like there, there's, there's the dollars out and then there's the opportunity cost. And we're not even asking you to offset the opportunity cost. We're, I would love it if we just didn't put in, and, and by we, I mean, let, let's be honest, whistle kick as, as the company, mm -hmm. which is my wallet, the Royal, um, we. the Royal, we, I, I would just love that, that this show broke even. I, we make money on other things. I just, I would love if this show broke even. So help you us can, make it. You can help, help. make that you happen. Help with that. Patreon.com slash whistle kick. All right. Two schools of thought. Okay. So <clears throat> what we're really talking about here is the idea, and I think this is what most schools do, where at certain levels of progress, rank, you learn certain forms. Mm -hmm. Versus what I think some people would call rotating curriculum, where... It's this month, this is the form we're focused on this month. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Every school I have been in, until recently, uh, you learn this form first. Mm -hmm. And it's usually the easiest. Mm -hmm. White belts, beginner students, like, we're not going to give them a super hard form. So you look, you, you learn this one first. And then you learn this one, and then you learn this one. You know, so for example, in Shotokan, you learn Heian Shodan, then Heian Midan, Heian Sanan, Heian Yondan, Heian Goda. Like there's an order, and you're not given the next one until you've learned the ones before. And I would say, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, because you have connections with more schools than I do, but. I would say a vast majority of schools do it that way. I'm going to guess it's more than 90% do it that way. Yeah. And the what made me think of this episode, of, of this topic of teaching it differently is uh, just before COVID, the school that I was most recently training at changed it. It used to be that way. It used to be this, then this, then this, then this. Um, and yet once it got up there, then it got a little fuzzy, but mm -hmm. there were definitely advanced forms. Sure. And... Shortly before COVID, the instructor said, you know what, we're I'm done doing that. Hmm. And for the next three months, we're only every single student in class is only going to work on this form hmm. and not just the form. We did all of the applications for it and sure. other things, but we use that as but a you base, focused on it, focused on that. Yeah. So by the end of the, sem the quote semester, by the end, of, by the time the next testing cycle came around, you had worked, everyone had worked on it so much. So even if you were a beginner, you still knew so much about that form. And then testing happened. And then the next semester started. And now we're working this form instead mm -hmm. for the entire, you know, four months. Yeah. And I think here's what I'm wondering. Because I, I think the initial reaction is the same reason that most schools do it the way they do it, which is, well, the first form is generally easier than, than mm -hmm. the later forms. Yeah. And I'm trying to imagine, you know, I have a hard enough time teaching my, my white belts Pinyon Shodan. Do I want to give them Pinyon Godon? Yeah. Probably not. Or They're... Kusanku or Kankudai, depending on your, your, your school. Like that's, it's a really long that's, form. That's kind of rough. Yeah. yeah. Um, for those of you who don't know, Godon would be the fifth. I have five forms. Would be the fifth. So let's let's take a moment. Mm -hmm. Let's let's pretend all of the forms are the same complexity. Okay. Let's go there first because mm -hmm. I think I think that's uh, academically uh, clearer on the philosophy. Mm -hmm. So if all the forms were the same. Would there be a benefit to having certain having different people at different stages? Because I'm sure you've taught classes where you're like, 
All right. I got 15 people in this class, and we got 12 different forms that they're working on. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And what do a lot of schools do? We're going to start at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And by the end of class, you get to the third form. And the people in the higher ranks are going, oh, we didn't get to work on the form that I'm, I'm really good at those first three now. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yep. Or, uh, all right, we're going to run through all 12 forms. But if you don't know the form, then you just sit out. Yep. And so that person's missing time. Mm -hmm. Right. And especially if it's a if it's a beginner, they maybe do the first one and then they sit out and watch eleven forms. Yeah. But that's a it's one thing if you knew eleven it's, and you sit out for one. So boring. Yeah, absolutely. It's a waste of time. Yeah. I mean, some people would make the argument, and there's something to be said for this, but I think not enough. Uh, that you know, yes, you can learn by watching. And they get to see the forms that they're going to be doing eventually. But there's you, something to be said for if that. If you watch but, 11 forms exactly, in a row, exactly. you're not learning anything. No, no, exactly, exactly. Yep. You might be building some familiarity and go, oh, I remember seeing this. Exactly. But I, I wanted to bring that up because I, I wanted to combat what uh, an audience member right now might be thinking. Well, yeah, but they're learning by watching. Eh, not enough, in my opinion. Yep. If, if you could learn effectively from watching... Uh, we as an industry would not have railed against video instruction mm -hmm. for the last 50 years. Okay. Not that you can't. It's just not as effective as being in front and having an individualized instruction session, right? We all know that. Okay. I think if all the forms were the same complexity, mm -hmm. it would create a shift in the way it's taught and it would be, this is form one month, this is form two month, or mm -hmm. quarter, or year, or yep. whatever. Yep. And I think that would fairly quickly solve itself. I think perhaps if that was the case at rank testing, it might not be you have to show us this form and this form. It would be you have to show us the two forms you know best. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I, I think that kind of works, right? Because there, there are plenty of things that are like that. You know, when, when most schools that I'm aware of, including I think all the ones I've, I've ever been part of, sparring is part of the testing. Mm -hmm. And we're not told, here's how you have to spar. You can sure. use whatever techniques you want. Yep. Yep. And you're expected to use the techniques that you're able to apply best. So mm -hmm. that, that could kind of work. I think that kind of makes sense. Uh, I see a pro and a con in that students would feel more connected because they're working on the same things. But that could also be a detriment in that higher rank students are, they probably already know the form. And are they getting, I think it would probably be more effective for the, the newer students than the more advanced students. Yes, that is the experience I had. <clears throat> um, and it's not that, I, it's not that I as an advanced student couldn't use work working on a form that I already knew. Um, but, and we worked on more than just the form. Like I said, we worked yeah. on all the applications to it as well. So there's definitely was things there to learn for sure. sure. But it definitely, I did not feel like I was progressing as quickly when I had a new thing to be working on. Yeah. <clears throat> Again, we're still at the stage where all the forms are the same yeah, complexity. Yeah, exactly. Yep. But what I'm thinking is if I have a, a, a new student learning this form and an advanced student learning the same form or working on the same form, I'm holding the advanced student to a higher standard, sure. which takes more time. And so in this case, as you said, either the advanced student doesn't get the detail or the basic student is sitting there. Maybe they're not uh, off on the side observing, but we're talking about subject matter that is premature for them. Yeah, they're, they they're not going to get it yet because yeah. we haven't done the prerequisites. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So that's, that's the hypothetical of all the forums being the same. Let's mm -hmm. put that aside. I think we beat that up enough. The reality is they're not, they're not. I've never been part of a school where all the forums are the same complexity. They, with some exceptions at various points in the, the rank progression and the forms progression, they have all gotten harder as time has gone on, whether it's harder because the moves are arranged more complexly or there's the moves more. themselves are more complex or there's, there's more, more of them. them. Yep. Um, doesn't really matter. 
there's just there's more and it's more complex. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now you could potentially hybrid this, you know. So let's say, you know, let's take the example you mentioned Shotokan. So you mentioned mm -hmm. Payon Shodan, uh, the Shotokan schools I've trained in had Taikyoko Shodan before that. Yep. You yep. know, which for for those of you out there, you probably have this. It's it's a, a bunch of low blocks and punches. If you don't have it, you've probably done it, or it's probably close to your Shodan or something, right? So. Um, block punch, block punch, block punch. If you did that one month and then the next month you're doing pinion showdown, it's close mm -hmm. enough that, yep. you know, you yep. could see, you could, you could kind of hybrid that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I think the goal of, and, and I've actually gotten some pushback on this. I believe the goal of a martial arts school should be to help students progress through their curriculum in a way that supports their individual reasons for training as efficiently as possible. Yeah, I, I can get on board with that. Now the efficiency part means we have to science experiment, right? We're, mm -hmm. we're, we're trying things, we're changing things, we're seeing what works. And I know a lot of schools out there have a lot of success with rotating curriculum. And if we look at the basic side of things, I am on board for that. In fact, I have a rotating curriculum yeah. for my, my <clears throat> basics. And it's worked really, really well. But I know how much challenge there is. And, and, and this is the heart of it, right? It's the challenge of balancing everyone's needs. I've only got 20 something students in my school. Mm -hmm. We've only got five forms. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I just promoted some folks to blue belt. So there are only three of the five out in the wild right now. Yeah, yeah, and I know how difficult it is to manage that yeah. in a relatively small group with a relatively small number of forms. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think it's important to understand why you would go from one to the other. Like, okay. <clears throat> the school that I was training at had, I'm not going to go through everyone right now, roughly nine forms, okay. nine or 10 forms total. Um, and we would have, you know, seven students in class and every single one of them was at a different place on that list. Yeah. And as a instructor, that for sure made things difficult. Yeah. Um, and so switching to a rotating kata of the month or semester or whatever definitely makes it easier for the instructor yeah. for sure. But I think the question that needs to be asked is, is that what's best for the students? And I'm not saying it is or isn't. Every school will be different because you may have a good way of managing those seven students at different levels yeah. and better than someone else. And switching won't, wouldn't make sense. I think it's fair to say that the reason most schools don't do this is because it would not be best for most schools. Mm -hmm. Here's where it could, though. Here's where it could be better. And it requires a, a school to break what is often an unspoken, sometimes a spoken rule. Mm. And it has to do with at what rank and competency level are you allowed to help someone else yes, to help, on their help journey. The instruction. Mm -hmm. yep. So here's what happened organically in my school. We had a few people that earned their yellow belt together. And then one of those people spent a lot of time practicing and, and really showed some competency for forms. And so guess what? I had yellow belts working with white belts. Mm -hmm. Now, some of you out there are freaking out. <laughs> but here's, here's what I do that's a little different than some schools in the way I teach forms. And, and you've seen this. And if you've been to uh, Matic Level 1, teacher training, or you've been to all in weekend. I mean, we, we, this is how we teach forms. I don't care about the detail until you've reached the point that you can do the whole form by yourself mm. without help. Because guess what? Correcting someone on the exact position of their downward block when they can't even do the whole thing on their own to practice at home is silly. Yeah. I can teach almost anyone any form in an hour and they remember it for maybe not forever, but long enough that they can practice it and retain it. And then we can start refining. it. Yeah. 
So the job of the yellow belt helping the white belt wasn't to make sure that low block was in the perfect position. It was to help them stumble through mm -hmm. the pattern itself mm -hmm. and get them closer to the goal of being able to practice on their own. Yeah. And now I've got a couple blue belts in the class. We've got blue belts, we've got yellow belts, we've got white belts. And the last time we did, had a forms day, I think we had four different groups of people. Mm. And I wasn't leading any of them. Mm. I was circulating. Yep. Yep. And I'm going, okay, I'm watching. All right. So now I not only get to help instruct the student learning the form, I get to help instruct the student instructing the form. form. So there is even more education happening going on. And I love it. So yeah. if we took this idea, so let's say there were nine forms, mm -hmm. and let's say you had, you know, a bunch of people in the school and all nine forms were represented in there. Mm -hmm. Maybe you have them in groups of three. Mm, sure. Maybe that, you know, for this month, if you only know the first three forms, you're working on the first form. If you only know four, five, and six, you're working on five, four, mm -hmm. seven, eight, nine, you're working on seven. seven. Yep. And then maybe the next month it goes to two and five and eight. Yep. And maybe you have to carve out a fourth group sure. for somebody who just started. Now they're learning the first form. Mm -hmm. Or maybe the second form is close enough in complexity that you can learn that first. Or maybe everyone gets two forms, the sure. one you're working on and the one you're helping instruct. Yeah, yeah. I think there's a lot of ways of looking at this, mm -hmm. for sure. Um, here's another thought. Uh, I, I will use Shotokan as an example. Kankudai in Shotokan is a very long form. Some schools will know it as Kusanku mm -hmm. or Kushanku. Uh, it's a very long form, and, and it's typically in Shotokan schools taught just before Black Belt. Um, if you are using this rotating curriculum and White Belts are now learning Kusanku or Kankudai, right, really difficult form, but if you're rotating curriculum is in like in a three or four month series, your white belt after four months of doing Konkudai, are they going to do it as good as a black belt? No, but they're going to have a pretty good grasp of some advanced things. Yeah. Can that help them in the future? Absolutely. It, it, it creates a question. And I think if you, if you're willing to wrap your head around, mm. this is possible. What does it look like for a white belt to do Konkudai? Mm -hmm. What does it look like for a new student to do a complex form, which most of us have no experience with? Yeah. But if you're willing to say, you know what? It's okay that they do that. Because how does, it, how does a brand new student learn any form? Rote memorization. Repetition. They yeah. really don't know what they're doing. Even mm -hmm. if it's low block, punch, and this thing, and that thing, they don't know what they're doing. Right? They're, they're, they're punching up here and they're kicking over there. They, they don't know what they're doing anyway. They're memorizing the pattern. Mm -hmm. Great. I think it can work. I think another thing that could be done to make it work, and I know some folks who have rotating curriculum do this, they split the form in half. Mm -hmm. So it might be, you know, maybe if you're a white belt, you're learning the first, let's say it's 10 moves of Kankudai. Yep. Sure. And if you're a blue belt, you have to know the first 15 moves. Yeah, yeah. In in my Shotokan school, actually, for after you learn the first five heians, the next form was Konkudai. And for your next test, you only had to learn the first half. Mm. And for the next test, then you learned the second half. Yeah. So you didn't even have a full form to memorize in that testing cycle. You only had the first half. Because it's such a long form. We actually kind of stumbled on doing that accidentally mm. as I was teaching my blue belts, uh, Pinyon Sandok, because the way we do it, you know, brr, 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 and there's a very logical end point where you turn 180 mm -hmm. yep. and it ends with that, that there's a punch mm -hmm. and I taught them the first half. And I said, go work on that. Cause it's mm. just what we had time for yep. that day. And they came in and one of them had, had, had nailed it. The other one didn't have as much time and he needed a little bit of a refresher and we got through the refresher and then I taught them the back half. 
And we just went through the back half as if it was its own sequence for mm -hmm. about 15, 20 minutes. And then we connected them. Connected them together, yeah. And it worked because the starting point was pretty clean. You know, yeah, hands yeah. crossed and, boom, and then you, you do your thing. And so there's something, and I hadn't even thought of this until about five minutes ago. And this is why I love that we do these episodes because it gets my wheels spinning. If we think about chunking down a form, What's a white belt chunk of Kankudai? There's the first chunk, the second chunk. Maybe it's yeah. three to five movements, mm -hmm. yeah. right? And so if it's a month long and it's class two, mm -hmm. can you get them the second five? Yeah. Yep. If it's a blue belt, maybe it's eight moves, eight moves. Ten, moves. ten moves. Yeah. Right. There, there's something in there that's kind of interesting. Yeah. Now, I don't, I don't, I don't think... I need this in my school, but I kind of wish I did because I'd love to work through that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cool. So, two schools of thought. Teaching, I think, I think that's about 17 schools teaching, of thought. Teaching forms in a set order or having a for the month or for the yeah. semester or whatever. Having a focus. Yeah. yeah. Neither way is right. No. Not, there are pros and cons to both. So. Yeah. Uh, you know, my, what I hope is that you listened or watched this episode and it yeah. made you think like, hmm, maybe I'll try that or maybe not. Maybe maybe you decide it doesn't work for you. The way you do it now is perfect. And that's if, if that's the case. Awesome. If it's perfect, I want to be your student. Yeah, I want to learn from perfection. That'd be great. And I think without the satire, we want to hear from you because I know a bunch of you out there have rotating curriculum. I want to hear how you're handling this. And, you know, the other thing that we didn't throw in there is a lot of schools have beginner classes, intermediate classes, That's advanced true, classes, true. and that changes things as well. Yep, it does. So what we're more used to is all ranks in, in one class. In one so, class. So that, that's another thing, and I, I didn't want us to end without acknowledging that. But I want to hear, we want to hear, how do you do this? How do you approach this subject? And especially, did you used to do it a different way? Yeah. Have you changed the way you did it? Why? What's been the upside? Is there any downside to it? Let us all learn from each other. Best place to post this in the Facebook page, Martial Arts Radio. And, you know, when, when sometimes, and not but often, but sometimes you all send such amazing feedback. We do a, a follow-up. Last week's episode was that exact thing. Yep. So help us continue to serve all of you. With no, your... two weeks ago. Oh, I did it wrong. Two weeks ago was, was that. How dare you? <sighs> okay, fair enough. Andrew got pant, plant, plant slapped. Yep. That was harder to say than I expected. It's okay. This is the fourth episode we're recording today. <laughs> it is the last one, if you couldn't tell. If you want to reach out to us directly, Andrew at Jeremy at Whistlekick.com. Our social media is at Whistlekick. Patreon.com slash Whistlekick is the place to go to. Support us most easily, but if you want to pick something up at whistlekick.com, use the code podcast one one five to grab yourself a t-shirt or a t-shirt hat or any of the other great things we have over there. It's also the place to find out about our events and all that good stuff. Thank you for joining us today. We appreciate you spending some time with us. Until next episode, train hard, smile, and, and have, have a great, great day. day. I think four is the limit. Yeah, I think so. I think four, if we're going to do more than four, there's got to be food. Agreed. In there. I, I stayed I stayed pretty sharp through it. Yeah, no, that was good. But, yeah. Let's go get food. Got a little blurry, for sure.